Welcome back to the channel guys, good to see you again. Next week we have the first event in the windsurfing slalom world cup and I don't know about you guys but I'm super excited to see the guys back in action and also to see a full tour this year on the PWA slalom course. It's super exciting and that's why I decided to make this video a top 10 prediction for the PWA Garda. And I've done a video like this in the past about other World Cup events and I know some people were getting frustrated with me because I didn't put them in the top 10 and some people thought it was silly but the reason why I want to do this video is just because I'm super hyped for the event and I'm just speculating here who's in the top 10 and I want to get some momentum going for the World Cup because I think it's super exciting to speculate who is going to end up in the top 10, who is going to win and just talk about this stuff because there's a lot changing in the PWA over the years. Actually we didn't have a fully fleshed out tour in the Slalom World Cup for like five years now because of Covid and all the stuff going along with it so it's going to be super exciting to see a world champion crown not just in one or two events but I think there's seven events on the tour this year for the slalom guys so it's going to be a lot of different conditions if it happens like this and I'm super excited that it starts next week. If you just want to see my top 10 you can go down in the timestamps below and I will put where the top 10 predictions start but let's first talk about a little bit about the state of the tour where it's at at the moment and what we can expect from these events. So I think over the last couple of years the PWA World Cup especially in slalom has been in a difficult spot and during Covid in 2020 there were zero events. In 2021 I think we had the one event in Israel and last year we had two events so it's slowly starting to build up again and also we had this big change over the years like announced in 2020 that it's not going to be Finn only but then the foiling came into the game and it's changed a little bit every year now so now with a fully fleshed out tour with seven events it's going to be super interesting to see how it's all going to play out because basically before 2020 when we had the tour with a lot of events there were always the top three which were Matteo Iacchino, Pierre Mortefon and of course Antoine Albo and basically at every event with the Finn these three guys were basically in the top three and it was really hard, I think, for the new guys, the new generation, to get into this top three. But I think with the foiling and with a couple more years passing, a couple more years of training, it's going to be a super difficult one this year to predict at the end who is going to become world champion. And I think there's a lot of guys, especially on the foil now, who can win heats and even the whole event. And that, I think, makes it just super exciting to watch this year and see how it's all going to play out. But talking about Finn and foil, I've just looked at the regulations for the gear and I think the guys can register four boards so they register one foil board and three slalom boards and six sails and from what I heard is that most guys use like four of the six sails as foiling sails and they basically don't do just the sails for the low wind stuff but they choose the foil sails basically throughout the whole range so they register like a 4.7 up to an 8.8 eight. so in all the wind conditions they can go on foil and we've seen that play out over the last couple of years that the foil is really competitive in all kinds of conditions and I think some guys are now only training on foil and they will only really go on the fin when the conditions are like big shore break or super big waves or something you cannot handle on the foil and basically in all other conditions even if it gets really windy they will stay on the foil but I think then there's also a couple of guys who really did train on fin for the high wind stuff, or so let's say for like 25 knots and more. And I think especially if we get events like this, it's going to be super interesting this year to see if the fin is actually still competitive and if those guys made the right gamble to train for the fin on the small gear or if the guys who say I do foil only made the right move. And I think the two events that are going to make or break the fin this year are the Pozo event in Gran Canaria because this is the same event with, that they always did where they do the wave competition and on the same spot now this year we're going to have a slalom competition and of course that makes it super exciting if they go slalom in between the waves and it's also a place where they have sometimes over 50 knots so I don't know if the fin guys, oh, sorry, I don't know if the foil guys are actually going to go on the foil in, the, in those conditions especially with big shore break or if they are forced to go on the fin and then I think it will mix it up a lot and the other event is Fuerteventura is back on the tour and this event is always super choppy but it's not like it's big waves there and strong wind so there I think the foil could actually have an advantage if they manage to just fly over the chop and 
you, we, we've seen that play out over the last couple of years. The Finn guys have the speed, but as soon as there's like one tiny little lull in one of the drives, they're gone because the acceleration of the foil is just that much higher and also they don't slow down in the drives as much. So yeah, for me, it's super exciting. But first, let's look at this first event, which is PWA Torbole Lake Garda. And I think for this event, we cannot really expect the super strong winds. They have sometimes strong wind in the morning from the northern direction, but it's like from six to eight. So I don't know if the World Cup is gonna go out in those conditions. I think more likely they're going to go out later in the evening or afternoon with a southern breeze, which is generally around like 15 knots. So these probably are ideal foil conditions and we're not gonna see a lot of people on fin there. So with that in mind, let's get into the top 10 predictions and what I think who's going to end up on top for this first World Cup of the season. And please guys, don't take this personally. It's just, I'm a fan of the World Cup and I do it for fun to get some momentum. So don't take it in any negative way if you're competing and I didn't put you on there. It's just for fun and you have to put someone in and some people out. All right, so in 10th place, I have William Huppert. And he just came off a win and got his first world champion title at the Prince of Speed in the foil speed discipline. So he has shown that he, that he has the speed on the foil. And last year I think he finished 13th or 14th in the PWA. And I think he's going to move up a couple of slots this year. So I have him inside the top 10 for this first event of the season. In number 9 I have Nico Preen. And I think Nico this year has been really focused on training for the PWA and putting all of his focus onto the PWA. Like the last years, he was always competing on the World Cup on an event here and there, but he had this big drop for starboard and I think that takes a lot of focus off you. And I think now that he's solely focused on YouTube and doing the PWA, I think he will step it up this year and I think he will get the consistency this year. He's been training the whole winter in Tenerife and I just watched his last video. He put on some weight for the World Cup and I think he's going to do real well here and get into the top 10 and sail a really solid season this year. So this will be exciting to see how he does if he puts all his focus this year onto the PWA. Moving on to my prediction to the 8th place finish, I have Jordi Vonk. And yeah, I think he's a super solid sailor. He's got the consistency. On foil is also super quick and I think it's gonna be a purely foil event here at Garda and so I think yeah he's gonna do well he's I have him in eighth position I think he could end up also much higher like basically anyone on this list and he's also trained there I think last week I saw some pictures or a couple weeks ago so I think he's on his game and he's gonna do well for this first e event of the season and in the seventh position I have Alexandra Cousin and he has been, I think, in 11th place last year for the overalls. And I think here he's going to do pretty well and get into the seventh position because he as well is a really solid sailor. And I think he's not making a lot of mistakes on the race course. And this will really help him here if we have a lot of heats. And he's going to end up in the top 10 in my prediction. So moving on to number six. For this one, I have Pierre Mortefond. Pierre Mortefond, one of the big three. He's been winning events and getting a world champion title and has been there in the scene for a long time and he's also shown that he's also very competitive on foil and I think he has got his game together for this one and but in my feeling I only have him in sixth and it's just basically a feeling I don't really know why I didn't put him higher but I'm feeling like the guys I have higher on this list are gonna do better in this event and stepping it up so that's why I have Pierre in sixth and not higher so number five here we have the newcomer the beast, Johan Zö, the 0.7 rider from Denmark. And he's shown last year where he was only 19 years old, I think he finished, let me check. Yeah, he finished eighth in the World Cup last year. And I think this year he's gonna step it up a couple of spots because he was so fast last year with only 19 years of age. And I think he's really one of the big talents that we haven't seen in a long time. And I think he's gonna move up very fast in the rankings and he has incredible speed on foil and that's why I have him for example also over Pierre Mortefond now. He's, he has the stature, he's like very very tall and also quite heavy and that's why I think he has really the foil speed together and he can really push and get a couple spots higher than he did last year. So that's why I have him in number five. And then for position number four, almost in the top three, I have Enrico Marotti. And from what I heard from the guys training in Tenerife, he has incredible speed on the foil. He's pushing really hard. So I think he's gonna do super well here and 
get into this fourth position, possibly even into the top three. We will see. But yeah, I feel like he has really got his game together and is going to do well for this event. And then, for the podium, in third position, I have Matteo Iacchino. And Matteo is just a guy who I think, or the guy on the PWA tour at the moment, who has the most consistency. I think that he's really got his mental game together and he's a really, really good racer and all this experience he can take into the first event of the season where maybe some guys are still nervous and messing up some races and I feel just with his consistency he's going to place inside the top three for this event and yeah that's why I have him in third and I think he's going to do pretty well. I think he's one of the guys who could also possibly push on the fin if, if it gets windier which I don't think it will for this event but yeah let's see. For number two we have last year's world champion Maciek Rutkowski. He's also a guy who has been super fast for years and years and years but now has finally got the consistency together over the last couple of years. Got his first world champion title last year, which was super impressive. And I think now he has like the, the mental game to really play it cool and just get a first good result for the world to win here at Garda. And I don't think he's gonna place outside the top three. But who do I have winning the event? And in my prediction, I have Amado Rieswijk winning the event. I think after he made the switch from freestyle to solely focus on slalom, he will really show us this year what he can do on the foil. And why do I say foil? I think especially on the foil he's going to be super strong. I don't know if he has the same level on the fin like he does on the foil. I think he's better on the foil and I think as this is a foil only event and he's also really really muscular and heavy so I think he's, got, he's for sure got the speed which we saw in Zylt last year. And I think he's going to take it home and win this first event of the season. So yeah, that's my prediction. I hope you had fun with this video. And please don't get offended by the video. If it's just for fun, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Who is going to end up much higher? Who is not going to finish in the top 10 who I mentioned? And yeah, I'm really curious before the event what you people think. Who is going to end up well and who is not doing so well for this event. And it's going to be for sure a fun one to watch. I don't know if they have a live stream. If they do, I think I will make like a live stream of my own and make like a watch party. Let me know if you're in for this. I think it could be fun. And yeah, I'll see you over the next days when the World Cup starts. I'm sure gonna make up some videos, either live streams or like just some update videos because I'm super excited to watch this thing and follow it. And yeah, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, like the video and I'll see you in the next one.